Today we're gonna look at audiences and how you can utilize Google's audience settings for your search campaigns and how these can help you get better results. An audience is basically a big group of people that have some characteristics, something that they're interested in or something that they have in common as defined by Google. So you can target audiences in a campaign, you can exclude audiences in a campaign, uh, or you can just observe audiences. And I'll explain what all this means and I'll show you some examples of audiences here in this video. So to add an audience, you'd need to go to the audiences section. So right now, uh, th these are the audiences for this whole account. You can see there have not been any audiences added. If I want to add audiences, I would need to add them to specific ad groups or to specific campaigns. So uh, let's say I want to add audiences to this campaign. Now you can see the options here are targeting or observation. Targeting means that I only want to show my ad to people who are in these specific audiences meaning they've searched for the keywords I've targeted and they are also in the audience I'm targeting. This narrows your results quite a bit and usually I would not recommend this for a search campaign. What you wanna do instead is observation, which means our ad can still show to anyone even if they're not in one of the audiences we've added, but what we'll get to see is the data specifically for the audiences that we have added. So how this works is you can search for different audiences. So this uh, business is a, a fishing guide, a local fishing guide. So I might wanna look for audiences related to fishing. And I can see fishing equipment, boats, um, so these top ones are in-market audiences, meaning someone is actively researching fishing equipment or they're actively researching boats and watercraft. Um, down here, <coughs> these are affinity audiences, which is more of a, a long-term habit. So they're not necessarily actively looking for things related to boating and sailing, but over time they've showed Google that they are very interested in boating and sailing. So that might be one to consider adding. So what I can do is select the audiences I wanna add and then save them. And these will then add those audiences to the campaign. Well, nothing's gonna happen with that right away. The campaign's still gonna work exactly like it did before I added the audiences. What I'll be able to do though is later on in the coming weeks or months, I'll be able to look at the data for these specific audiences and see how these may have performed differently than average. I can then make decisions about uh, possibly uh, increasing the bids and bidding more aggressively for specific audiences or decreasing the bids for specific audiences. Um, but it all starts with adding the audience. Uh, you can see in addition to searching, you can look at Google's ideas, which are usually um, pretty good ideas. So it's giving us a number of ideas here related to uh, sporting, okay? Uh, you can also browse the audiences and look that way. You usually don't need to browse though because the search feature works pretty well. You can usually find the, the best audiences just by searching. So that's where you can add audiences. You can also add uh, remarketing audiences. So if you have remarketing lists set up on your account, you can add those to the search campaign and for remarketing lists, you usually would want to set a positive bid adjustment right away. So meaning maybe a 25% or a 50% increase because these people have already been to your site. They're already familiar with, their, with your business. 
there's a better chance of them becoming a customer. So it's worth paying more for them just because of the fact that they've been to your website already. So let's look at, at another example. And this is a campaign that already has added some audiences. And this is a junk removal company. Now I'm looking at an ad group right now. If I were to look at uh, a whole campaign, you can see this is split out by ad group. And it's, it's kind of hard to decipher just because there's so many here. Now you can export this data to a spreadsheet. You can combine, uh, you know, combine the data. So it's a little easier to look at that way. I'm not going to get into the details of that. That's pretty advanced. Um, so I'm just going to look at one ad group at a time here. But if you have a lot of ad groups, it might be necessary to, to move this into a spreadsheet and start combining the data. So it, you have, um, the data is more consolidated and it's, it's more telling. If I look at the data from one, one little ad group that hardly has any traffic, um, this doesn't really tell me anything. But if I were to combine this with data from a bunch of other ad groups, that would tell me something. Um, but I'm going to look at an ad group that does have a little more traffic. There is a little more to look at here. You can see this ad group is targeting um, remarketing lists. So 540 day list and 30 day list. And then it's also targeting um, a couple other remarketing lists like all converters, all visitors. You see there's not really any traffic attributed to those. Um, and then they're also targeting a similar list. So similar lists in Google, in my opinion, are complete garbage. I have not found them to be of any value. Uh, even if you're creating a similar list of customers it's a completely worthless list. The way Google creates these similar lists is not very good. Uh, we can see here that the similar list here isn't really performing. It's, it's high above average. Okay. There's not really any reason to use these similar lists. They're, they're garbage. So first off, I wouldn't target those, but let's look at some other possibilities here of lists to target and lists to potentially exclude. I'm going to tell you how I would go about finding lists to exclude from campaigns also. So here, if we look at the ideas, there are some pretty good ideas at the top. Uh, people moving, people looking for home cleaning services. These are prime customers for a junk removal company. Okay, so we might want to consider adding those. Now, if I'm adding audience lists, I don't recommend adding a lot of them. Just add maybe two or three, uh, five at the most is what I would add. And the reason is that when Google is attributing traffic to these audiences, they're only going to show, uh, someone's only going to be in one audience at a time even though they may actually be in the moving list and the home cleaning list and the home improvement list. They might be in a bunch of different lists, but when they're actually sending that click or that impression to your ad, it's only going to be reported being in one audience. So if you've added a bunch of extra audiences and a bunch of obscure audiences, it's just going to dilute your data too much. You want your data more consolidated than that. So sticking with just a few different lists is the way to go. Um, so we might add, we might add these couple of lists to the campaign. The other thing to do is think about exclusion lists. Now this is a, a little trickier um, because Google's lists are not perfect. So let's say I want to exclude this list of do-it-yourselfers. Um, if we're talking about age or gender, 
Google knows this information. We have to give that to Google when we set up a Google account. If we're talking about any other type of interest, Google has a, a fairly good idea, but they don't really know. And we don't know exactly how they're defining a lot of these lists. So it, it might be a good idea to exclude do-it-yourselfers because that might be someone a lot more um, a lot more prone to just filling up a, a truck and taking garbage to a dump themselves. We might want to exclude that list, but I don't know that for sure. So before I actually exclude it from a campaign, I'd want to add it to the campaign and observe it and then see if my theory is correct and that that traffic is in fact not performing well, then if and when I prove that, then I can possibly exclude that audience from the campaign. So start, even if it's an audience you think you're going to want to exclude, start by adding it as an observation and then uh, possibly excluding it. Um, another one we might want to consider for this particular company um, maybe truck and SUV enthusiasts someone who has a pickup truck uh, is, is a lot less likely to hire a junk removal company than someone who does not so this might be another audience we want to observe and then if and when we find out that, <clears throat> that we're not getting good results from that audience then we we can exclude it if we find an audience we want to exclude you can go to exclusions right here and then you can exclude from the whole campaign um, we could exclude this list from the campaign and save so take a look at your audiences if you haven't added any before Find some that you can add and, and just observe and see what, what happens with those over time. If you are targeting audiences, take a look at the results. Think about cleaning those up, removing some audiences, possibly excluding some audiences, and possibly adding uh, some new audiences to observe. My name is Kyle Sullerud, and I'll see you in the next video.